What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Andy's History Lessons. Yes, I've been gone for quite a while, but I'm back, and here we go. Since the war in Ukraine is still going on, I figured I would do a special on the Holodomor genocide in Ukraine that was started by the Soviet Union in order to try to bolster up support for Ukraine. So here we go. The Holodomor Genocide was a man-made famine that convulsed the Soviet Republic of Ukraine from 1932 to 1933, peaking in the late spring of 1933. It was part of a broader Soviet famine that also caused mass starvation in the grain-growing regions of Soviet Russia and Kazakhstan. The Ukrainian famine, however, was made deadlier by a series of political decrees and decisions that were aimed mostly or only at Ukraine. In acknowledgement of its scale, the famine of 32 to 33 is often called the Holodomor, a term derived from the Ukrainian words for hunger, holod, and extermination, more. Causes of the Famine The origins of the famine lay in the decision by Soviet leader Joseph Stalin to collectivize agriculture in 1929. Terms of Communist Party agitators forced peasants to relinquish their land, personal property, and sometimes housing to collective farms, and they deported so-called kulaks, wealthier peasants, as well as any peasants who resisted collectivization altogether. I'll do a video on the kulak genocide in another time. Collectivization led to a drop in production, the disorganization of the rural economy, and food shortages. It also sparked a series of peasant rebellions, including armed uprisings in some parts of Ukraine. The rebellions worried Stalin because they were unfolding in provinces which had, a decade earlier, fought against the Red Army during the Russian Civil War. He was also concerned by anger and resistance to the state agricultural policy within the Ukrainian Communist Party. He said to his advisors, quote, If we don't make an effort now to improve the situation in Ukraine, we may lose Ukraine. Stalin then ordered the NKVD to establish a block on the Ukrainian border. Stalin ordered the NKVD to confiscate all the grain and other food from Ukraine, thus condemning the Ukrainians to death. From famine to extermination, the result of Stalin's campaign was a catastrophe. In spring 1933, death rates in Ukraine spiked. Between 1931 and 1934, at least 5 million people perished of hunger all across the USSR. Among them, according to a study conducted by a team of Ukrainian demographers, were at least 3.9 million Ukrainians. Police archives contain multiple descriptions of instances of cannibalism, as well as lawlessness, theft, and lynching. Mass graves were dug across the countryside. And in those mass graves, some of the victims were buried alive, and one survivor reports seeing the ground moving as the starving people were buried and trying to dig their way out of their graves. Hunger also affected the urban population, though many were able to survive thanks to ration cards. Still, in Ukraine's largest cities, corpses could be seen on the street. Soldiers under Stalin's orders were given food in exchange for bringing in bodies of starving Ukrainians. I believe they were paid 200 grams of food for each dead body that they brought in. The famine was accompanied by a broader assault on Ukrainian identity. While peasants were dying by the millions, agents of the Soviet secret police were targeting the Ukrainian political establishment and intelligentsia. The famine provided cover for a campaign of repression and persecution that was carried out against Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian religious leaders. The official policy of Ukrainization, which had encouraged the use of the Ukrainian language, was effectively halted. 
Moreover, anyone connected to the short-lived Ukraine People's Republic, an independent government that had been declared in June 1917 in the wake of the February Revolution, but was dismantled after the Bolsheviks conquered Ukrainian territory, was subjected to vicious reprisals. All those targeted by this campaign were liable to be publicly vilified, jailed, sent to the Gulag, which was pretty much the Soviet Union's death camps, like how the Nazis had throughout Europe in World War II, or they were executed. Knowing that this Russification program would inevitably reach him, Mykola Skripnik, one of the best-known leaders of the Ukrainian Communist Party, committed suicide rather than submit to one of Stalin's show trials. As the famine was happening, news of it was deliberately silenced by Soviet bureaucrats. Party officials did not mention it in public. Western journalists based in Moscow were instructed not to write about it. One of the most famous Moscow correspondents at the time, Walter Durante of the New York Times, went out of his way to dismiss reports of the famine when they were published by a young freelancer, Gareth Jones, as he, quote, thought Mr. Jones's judgment was somewhat hasty. Jones was murdered under suspicious circumstances in 1935 in Japanese-occupied Mongolia. Stalin himself went so far as to repress the results of a census taken in 1937. The administrators of that census were arrested and murdered, in part because the figures revealed the decimation of Ukraine's population. Although the famine was discussed during the Nazi occupation of Ukraine in World War II, it became taboo again during the post-war years. The first public mention of it in the Soviet Union was in 1986 in the aftermath of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster. That disaster, too, was initially kept secret by Soviet authorities. Assessment. Because the famine was so deadly and because it was officially denied by the Kremlin for more than half a century, it has played a large role in Ukrainian public memory, particularly since independence. Ukrainian poet Ivan Drak was the first to speak publicly about the famine in 1986 after the Chernobyl disaster, citing it as an example of how damaging official silence can be. Monuments commemorating the Holodomor have been erected by the Ukrainian government as well as by the Ukrainian diaspora, and Holodomor Remembrance Day is observed around the world on the fourth Saturday of November. Ukraine has also invested in research on the famine. By early 2019, 16 countries, as well as the Vatican, had recognized the Holodomor as a genocide, and both houses of the United States Congress had passed resolutions declaring that Joseph Stalin and those around him committed genocide against the Ukrainians in 1932 to 1933. Okay, guys, that is it. This concludes the rather tragic special on the Holodomor genocide. Never again will anything like that happen, and please support Ukraine. Let's all pray for Ukraine. Do svedanje, tovarishchi. I will see you guys next time. Please remember to like this video, leave a comment, share it with your friends and family. Follow me on Facebook at Andy Deandrea 2 and the 2 is with Roman numerals. So it's Andy Deandrea II, and, and subscribe to my channel. Peace out and rock on.